A spirometry result compares the volume with time, so a spirometry measures the volume of air inspired or expired as a function of time. During the inspiration, when the air goes inside, the volume increases and the pressure goes down to minus 6, making a U-shaped or covet-shaped concavity or half circle. The flow volume curve plots expiratory flow rate against volume. When inspiration and expiration are most rapid in the inspirometry testing, inspiratory flow is most rapid at the midpoint of the inspiration. That is why it makes a U-shape in the loop. During the expiratory phase, the high peak flow rate occurs at the start of expiration and then flow rate falls progressively. What do a spirometer measures? It measures force vital capacity and forced expiratory volume in one second. And what's force vital capacity or FVC? It is the total amount of air expelled after a maximal inspiration and normally it's about 4.8 liters. And what is FEV1? It is the amount of air that is expired in the first second after the maximal inspiration. What's the normal volume of FVC and FEV1? FEV1 is 4 liters and FEV1 FVC is 5 liters and the ratio of the two FEV1 divided by FVC times 100 is 80 percent. So the normal values is 80 percent but it may range from 80 to 120 percent. So here it is the normal value of FEV1 and FVC ratio. The FEV1 in one second is every square is one second so FEV1 in one second is 4 liters and the total amount of force vital capacity total amount of air expired is 5 liters so 4 upon 5 into 100 is 80 percent what a spirometer does not measure a spirometer does not measure residual volume functional residual capacity and total lung capacity why because air present in the lung does not come out during the spirometric procedure they can be measured by helium equilibrium test and by plethysmography functional residual capacity frc is the air in the lung at the end of normal expiration. TLC, total lung capacity, is the volume of air in a fully expanded lung and it measures about 6 liters. And residual volume is the amount of air in the lungs after maximal expiration and it measures about 1.2 liters. The shape of the loop varies in obstructive and the restrictive disorders. Why? Due to differences in changes in the FVC and FEV1. That makes it possible to differentiate between the two types. Obstructive disorders include asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and bronchiectesis. So what's the hallmark in obstructive disorders? In obstructive disorders, the hallmark is a decrease in expiratory flow rate. Also, FEV1 to FVC ratio is decreased and there is decrease in maximal air inspired. So in obstructive disorders, FEV1 reduced to less than 80% and normal or decreased force vital capacity and the ratio FEV1 to FVC is reduced less than 80%. Here is in one second the amount of forced expiratory volume in one second is 2 liters whereas force vital capacity is 4 liters so 2 upon 4 is 50 percent so it's reduced and functional residual capacity TLC and residual volume are increased in obstructive lung diseases. In the early obstructive disease, FEV1 to FVC may be normal and only abnormality may be decreased FEF 25 to 75% that gives an abnormal covert shape in the terminal portion of the curve. FEF 25 to 75% is a more sensitive measure of the small airway obstruction. 
Now, what is the shape of the expiratory curve in the obstructive disorder and why? Due to a non-uniform emptying of the airway, there is COVID or scalloped shaped expiratory curve in the severe cases. So the curve in mild obstructive disease is like this here. The black loop is supposed to be the normal and the red loop is the mild obstructive disease. Here this is the moderate obstructive disease. The concavity during the expiration is increased on the red colored loop. And this is the severe case with a scalloped curve in the red loop. Normally it should have been peak expiratory flow rate at this point but here in severe cases of the obstructive disorder peak expiratory flow rate is here. The, there is low FVC and FEV1 is reduced which lung volumes are increased or decreased in COPD as measured by the helium equilibration test. TLC may be normal or increased in the obstructive disorders. Residual volume is increased. Why? Due to airway closure during the expiration and FVC is decreased. Why? Because of the striking increase in the residual volume. Residual volume is the amount of air that cannot be expelled out of the lung by any means. What is the severity criteria of COPD on the basis of FEV1? In mild cases, FEV1 is 80%. In moderate cases, FEV1 is between 50 to 79%. In severe cases, FEV1 is 30 to 49%. And in very severe cases, it's less than 30%. What will be the features in a mixed obstructive and restrictive disorder? In a mixed disorder, all the volumes are decreased. See here, everything is decreased. Whereas in obstructive disorders, the ratio FEV1 to FVC is reduced and FEV1 is reduced. Whereas TLC is normal to increased and FVC is normal to decreased. The main feature is that FEV1 to FVC ratio is decreased with an increase in TLC in the obstructive disorder. Whereas in restrictive disorders, FEV1 to FVC ratio may be normal to increased. FEV1 is normal to decreased but FVC is markedly decreased. So in obstructive disorder FEV1 FVC ratio decrease in restrictive disorders it is increased whereas TLC increased in the obstructive disorder but is decreased in both mixed and restrictive disorders. In mixed disorders, all volumes are decreased. In obstructive disorder, FEF 25 to 75% is decreased, whereas in restrictive disorders, FEF 25 to 75% may be normal to decrease. In obstructive disorders, peak expiratory flow rate is decreased, but in restrictive disorder, it may be normal to increase.